Blackmagic is changing how we think about low-budget cinema cameras with powerful features and footage quality you typically only see in high-budget cameras. In the last episode, we did a walkthrough of the entire Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera's interface and menu system. But what's inside this camera that makes it so special? Find out in 180 seconds. In this video, we'll be talking about the hardware of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera. If you're interested in learning about all the options and settings of the camera interface, check out our other video on it. First off, let's talk about the body build of this camera. It's definitely a little odd when it comes to shape for a cinema style camera. And that's really not to say that the ergonomics of this camera are bad, far from it. It's just that it was an interesting choice to give it a body that resembles more of a DSLR or photography style camera. In my opinion, this actually makes it fairly easy to use for a run and gun type shooter and way easier to grip straight out of the box than say like an Ursa Mini Pro um, where you have to get multiple attachments and screens and a bunch of stuff for it. This camera not only gives you the form factor of a DSLR camera body, but it also gives you the film quality that's on par with higher end budget cinema cameras. So let's talk about what's inside this camera. The 4K Pocket Cinema Camera has a micro four third sensor, an active MFT mount, which helps to provide power to EF lenses with adapters, 13 stops of dynamic range, dual native ISO up to 25,600, and the ability to film at DCI 4K at rates of up to 75 frames per second. While these specs are incredibly impressive, the thing that makes this camera stand out above the rest is the actual footage quality that comes from it. Cameras can have impressive specs, but not really produce anything considered cinematic or special looking. And from the moment I started filming with this camera, I could tell the difference between this and Sony's mirrorless cameras and Canon's DSLR cameras. It's really just that good. Are there drawbacks to this camera? Yes, and we will discuss those in other videos, but I would say even with these drawbacks, it still has the ability to produce footage quality that you just can't get with other cameras in this price range. So with that being said, let's move on to some of the other hardware features that Blackmagic packs into this camera. One of the first things you'll notice about this camera as soon as you take it out of the box is its five inch touchscreen display. The 1920 by 1080 resolution personally greets your eyes with pleasant colors and an easy to navigate menu system. This screen is big and is eye-opening if you're coming from using, like a, again, a DSLR or mirrorless camera. You really can appreciate coming from that how well you were able to preview your image, especially when it comes to focusing on the camera. The touchscreen is incredibly responsive and has a lot of shortcuts built into it. While the screen is a great feature of this camera, there are some drawbacks to it as well. It is built into the camera body, which means you cannot rotate it out or adjust it for a better viewing angle. When you mod this camera with cages and accessories, it can sometimes be hard to see the screen itself, forcing you to buy an external monitor. Um, now, I have found a partial solution to this problem with how I build out my cage system um, for maximum viewing access. Um, and if you'd like to see how I build out my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera Rig, be sure to check that video out. Moving on from the touchscreen, let's talk about some of the inputs that are installed with this camera. First, we have a full-sized HDMI port. Open up the rubber covers on the left side of the camera and you will uncover multiple different inputs for the Blackmagic. One of the more intriguing inputs is its full-size HDMI port. You can now go ahead and throw away all of those adapters you've collected for your mirrorless and DSLR cameras. While this, again, is just more of a convenience item, it's really nice to have a full-size HDMI port when filming and easily find replacements out on the job if you forget to bring your adapter or specialized HDMI cable. A big concern most might have for this camera is the battery life. The Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera utilizes a Canon LPE6 style battery, and I'm really just gonna be honest here, it literally could serve a better purpose as a paperweight than a legitimate battery for this camera. While it is said that these batteries can last up to 25 to 40 minutes, it's really just 25 minutes or less in my experience. If you plan on buying this camera, expect to add a V-mount adapter, adapter cable, and a V-mount battery to your shopping list if you really wanna use this camera. I will be discussing what batteries I use and how I set it up in a future episode. 
but I will give Blackmagic credit for making it very easy to be able to add better battery solutions to this camera by adding in their 12 volt locking power input. This feature makes it easy to add power solutions to the camera without fear of the cable falling out while filming. Another great feature on this camera is the mini XLR input, and yes, it has phantom power. While I would love to have two XLR inputs on this camera, I'm really not gonna complain about just having one. Um, it's incredibly useful and can really help you utilize your superior mics because of that phantom power that is not always included on some other cameras. Now, while there is not a second XLR input, they do add a 3.5 millimeter mic input as well that can be used for um, uh, lapel mics or also can be used for a time code input. Also included next to these inputs is a headphone jack for you to be able to add headphones to and obviously monitor your audio during a shoot. And the last input on the left side of this camera is the USB-C connection. This allows you to record your footage to a solid state drive. This feature is actually probably one of my favorite. I love to be able to quickly connect a hard drive to the camera, record the footage to it, and then bring it back to a computer and edit it off the same hard drive while on the go. This is a far cry from having to edit on an SD card or even a CFast card, and the reliability of it is a lot higher, I would say, than um, an SD card and you won't accidentally step on it or snap it while you know, you're know you out on a shoot. I would recommend using Samsung's T5 solid state drives, and that's what I typically will use in my setups. While this camera still has options for CFast cards or SD cards, SD cards in this camera actually do have limitations on them and are only able to record in 24 frames per second, but I really never would have used these options when you can literally buy a 500 gigabyte Samsung SD card for around 80 to $90 typically. It's really worth it to just go with a solid state drive for this camera. Last but not least are the buttons and dials found around the grip of the camera. You have buttons for iris control, focus control, a high frame rate toggle, a zoom function, a menu toggle, playback, ISO, shutter, white balance, stills, two record buttons, and three function keys that are customizable. And that's it for our overview of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K's hardware. Feel like I missed something or said something wrong? Please let us know in the comments below so we can correct it. Thanks for watching today's episode. Be sure to subscribe to our channel below and hit the notification bell to keep up to date with our latest videos. Until next time, this is John Owens with Frame Voyager.